fall and I don't know when it will end and the so-called Indian summer um, is still there and it's fall uh, but there are many other places around the world where people have decided uh, to band together and uh, say no to corruption and no to impunity and expect their leaders to do something about it. Um, so therefore the cost is, is being felt uh, around the world and uh, we of course know that the financial cost is huge, assessed at about 1.3 trillion US a year, which disappears in bribes, in illicit trade, uh, in tax evasion, and uh, you know, the, the danger about corruption is that it's the loss of hope. It's when people decide that they cannot do something to deal with it, <coughs> that it becomes very difficult. Or when, when bribery becomes what is seen is a normative value as opposed to the opposite. So um, I think that um, you know beyond the financial development, um, the cost that is, uh, beyond depriving citizens of services as we see around the world, as right to health, right to education, right to livelihood, <coughs> a right to life itself, because we know that corruption kills. I think that corruption robs people of their dignity. Uh, it robs them of something very deep in themselves once you become complicit, even though you may feel forced to be complicit. Uh, if you're taking your child who is very ill and you're asked or expect to put money under the table. So we, we know that uh, you know the pervasive and dangerous and people in this room, I don't think have to be convinced uh, about this. I'd like to deal with the cultural aspect both from people, governments, business, and a number of other areas. But because I think we have seen <coughs> that until people decide that this is no longer acceptable, it's very difficult to really have a sustainable change. And we have seen that there are many ways of helping people to be empowered, to feel that they are part, in a sense, of a new culture. Uh, and we know that access to information is very important uh, in order to have this power that people, people need. And here, of course, in India, you have had access to information legislation now for quite a long time. Um, we also know that uh, this is a way of being able to uh, find information to counter bribery and, and to deal with it. I think the second area which we have seen of empowering people is the use of social media, which is part of this new revolution, uh, which means that even if a government controls the media, which is not the case because you have, I don't know, how many different outlets in this country with a free space for expression, uh, but that um, the media, it's a new form of journalism that you have when people start to Twitter and, and, uh, and as Nick Gowing yesterday was saying in, in Mumbai, um, that now institutions like the BBC don't necessarily get their news information from their correspondent on the ground. They're getting it from Facebook, they're getting it from, uh, you know, checking on, on, their, on their computer and, and seeing that somebody has been able to uh, take a picture using their Blackberry or telephone and so on. So that is something very new, um, which can be destabilizing in a country, but which can be used as a force for good to empower people. 